Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for listening. I say that in a very special way if this happens to be your very first time to be tuning in the broadcast and becoming part of our Bible study together. To you, I say a very special welcome. Now, right now, my Bible sits open to the book of Ruth, that little four-chapter book there in the Old Testament, the book of Ruth. We're in chapter two, and if you can, right now, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there in Ruth chapter 2. I'll be reading the opening three verses here today. Now, as we go through our study time today, I will be encouraging you to get a free sample packet of our English gospel tracts. My announcer is going to give you three ways by which you can give us your name and your mailing address. Obviously, Bible Tract Echoes, the radio broadcast, is the radio arm of a larger ministry, as my announcer already alluded to. We have been for 81 years now publishing gospel tracts. That's an evangelism tool. We've been publishing these tracts in different languages and giving them away all over the world. And I want to give you a free sample packet. And again, I'm going to highlight one of the tracts here in just a moment. But let me lead into our Bible study time this way. A few decades ago now, two godly Bible teachers each wrote a commentary on the book of Ruth. One titled his book, Ruth, Romance and Redemption, and the other, I think his title was simply The Romance of Ruth. Now, both men carefully read, studied, and taught the book of Ruth as a standalone actual story. Now, yes, 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 they did make some very practical spiritual applications along the way, but they did so only after first laying out the basic story of Ruth as God has given it. Now, that's what simply we're trying to do in our study here through the book of Ruth. My personal title for my studies is this, Ruth, Faith Finds Rest Amid Ruin. Faith Finds Rest Amid Ruin. And as we get back to chapter 2, we are at the opening scene of the budding romance. And in this scene, we're going to see the second clear act of God's grace here found in the book of Ruth. The first act of God's grace is the last verse of chapter 1, where Naomi and Ruth returned to Bethlehem, and it was harvest time. Now, grace is going to show up as Ruth just happens to go to work in the field where her future husband owns. She just happens to be there. Get your Bible, get pen and paper to take some notes, and we're going to jump in here in just a moment. The gospel tracts I mentioned here a moment ago, they are free to you. And obviously, for us to print and publish and ship these tracts all over the world, that does cost money. And many local churches and individuals use us as one of their missionaries. And we're so thankful for that. In the last 14 years, we have seen over half a million people respond to receive Christ after receiving one of our gospel tracts. Now, one of my most favorite of all of the 40 tracts that we have here is this one entitled, The Best I Can. The Best I Can. It's my favorite because, number one, it's so simple. Number two, it's a little larger print. Number three, it's because it's so simple. Number four, the gospel illustration here is so clear. And number five, it's my favorite because it's so simple. Now, friend, in case you didn't get the point here, the gospel can be complicated if you and I make it that way, or it can be simple. And if you are trying to learn how to make the gospel simple, get this track, 
the best I can. It's just one of the 40 tracks in that sample pack that we'll send to you if you'll give us your name and your mailing address. My announcer will tell you how to do that at the end of the broadcast, or you can order that sample packet by going to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. All right, if your Bible's open there, Ruth chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3 say this, And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me go now to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she, that is Ruth, went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her hap was to light on the part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was the kindred of Elimelech. Stop right there, please. Yesterday in the broadcast, I gave my four-part outline here for Ruth chapter 2. Part number 1 is verses 1 through 7. My title here for verses 1 through 7 is this. The work, the work. I could also call it the introduction because here is where the two key people in this love story, this romance, are going to meet for the very first time. Verses 1, 2, and 3 that we read gave us the actors. In a moment, I'm going to get to verses 4, 5, 6, and 7 where we quickly see the attention, and by that I mean the attention that Boaz will pay to Ruth. But here in verses 1, 2, and 3, the actors are introduced, and Boaz is talked about in verse 1, and we learn some facts about him. Notice the word beginning with the letter F, the facts about him. In verse 2, Ruth is seen. There we see her faithfulness. She is faithful in caring for her mother-in-law. She is a working, caring person. But along with the facts about Boaz and the faithfulness of Ruth, in verse 3, we see the field where the work is going to take place. And I love the way the King James Bible translates verse 3. It says this, And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her hap, notice the word, her hap, was to lie upon the part of the field belonging to Boaz. If you've read much about the founding fathers of our country, you know that they loved to use the phrase divine providence. Divine providence. They used it to talk about how God graciously and sovereignly worked to make certain events happen when they did and how they did. Our founding fathers understood that too many, far too many things had to come together at the right moment for all of this to just be mere coincidence. Our country was founded by divine providence. And by the way, I wish those who teach and promote evolution in millions of years had the same level of basic observation about as our founding fathers did. Coming back to Ruth, Ruth happens to end up working in the field owned by Boaz. Now, other times when this same Hebrew word that's translated hap here, when it's used in the Old Testament, it's translated by words like chance or something befell or befalling. This word is used five times, by the way, in the book of Ecclesiastes. Well, Ruth and Naomi return to Bethlehem with broken and repentant hearts. They returned with faith in God, even though it meant they had to endure shame. These women had no idea how God was going to care for them. All they knew was that they had to obey God, and to do that, they had to go to Bethlehem. The God of grace and blessing saw their brokenness, saw their repentance, saw their faith, and he begins to respond in grace. That's the kind of God the Bible declares to us, a God of grace and mercy. By God's grace, Ruth ends up in the field of Boaz. She had no clue what God was doing. All she was doing is trusting God and serving her mother-in-law. That's all she knew to do, and she did it faithfully. In coming to verses 4 through 7, we'll see them more tomorrow. 
these words I call the attention. That's my outline, the, the attention. That's my outline, as I said here, where we're going to find that Boaz is going to be paying attention to Ruth. Now, remember, Ruth is a Moabitess. She's a Gentile. She sticks out like a sore thumb among the Jewish culture there. Now, if you're taking notes, jot down three words, all beginning with the letter E, like in the word elephant. Are you ready? Let me just list them for you. Number one, environment. Number two, eyes. Number three, education. Environment, eyes, and education. Today, let me just deal with the environment. In verse four, we find the environment for work. Listen to verse four. It says this, And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Just just stop there for a moment. Boaz, probably on a horse, rides up to the field and he greets his workers. Here's what he says. The Lord be with you. And the workers respond with, The Lord bless thee. Wow! How many believers would love to work in a place like that? But but wait a minute. Before we wish about having a workplace like that, let's ask ourselves this question. What can you and I personally do to help develop that kind of work environment? Beloved, you may not be the boss where you work, but you sure can play a key role in setting the work environment in the area in which you work. I'm going to pick up verses 4 through 7 of more tomorrow. But for right now, let's talk about our gospel impact at our workplace. Perhaps, just perhaps, our gospel impact can be greater if we began speaking well of our boss began speaking well of our co-workers. I wonder, I wonder what might happen if you and I began saying to our fellow workers, if you and I began to even address our boss with words like this, the Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Trust me, nobody else is saying this kind of stuff. If you say that, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. You and I will never know how God will take words like that genuinely spoken to stir an interest for Christ in a fellow worker. No work environment is perfect. Some of you might work in a rather stinky environment, and I don't mean the physical smell of it. I mean just the the atmosphere is just not great. But I wonder if you and I learn to blossom for Christ in our work environment and we begin to bless those, even our boss, who may be the one setting the stinky environment. I wonder if you and I begin to bless people. I wonder what kind of gospel impact. You say, Brother Mark, it'll never work. Oh, friend, you do not know what the grace of God will do. You just do by faith what God has called us to do Let's be people who bless those, even our enemies. Bless those that persecute. Isn't that what Jesus said? Let's go with the gospel and let's bless lost people's lives. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.